Everything in life is all about balance. But what if something were to come along and mess up this balance? The balance in our environment is constantly being altered by invasive species that are introduced to new areas. My partner Yudira Flores and I, Renata Degrella, set out to determine the effects an invasive species can have on a native species. This is Snail Meets Crab, the effects of chemicals used by Hemigraphus sanguinis, the Asian shore crab, on the American slipper snail, Capricula fornicata. Hemigraphus sanguinis is an invasive species that first came to the east coast of the United States on the ballast water of cargo ships in the 1980s due to its high reproductive rate and ability. In order to better understand this invader, we journeyed to Stony Brook University, where we would have the privilege to collaborate with Dr. Diana Padilla. I'm Professor Diana Padilla. I'm in the Department of Ecology and Evolution here at Stony Brook University. And I am interested in aquatic ecology. So I introduce a non-native species. It can compete with all the native species, compete with them for space or food, or it may be an important predator on them, or it can displace them from where they might otherwise live. When a species gets introduced to marine communities, we found that a lot of them can have such a huge impact on the community that they alter all aspects of the ecology of that community and be very, very disruptive. Now that we knew a little bit more about Henry Dabbs and Wine, we ready to start our experiment. We began working in the lab on July 1st, continued into early September. The experiment lasted a total of 50 days. The Capitula and the Tabs were first masked. After being measured with a caliper, 12 corbitules were placed into a glass dish. The pads were placed into a plastic container with mesh in order to keep them from escaping and then placed on the other side of the cage in our setup box. We created a container to hold the crab and snail tank. Our setup consisted of a plastic container with a plastic cage lighting fixture in the center to separate the crab from the snail. We covered them with lids and had a hole drilled into the top in order to allow for aeration. We repeated these steps until we had five control boxes and five experimental boxes. We then placed these boxes on top of bricks in the large temperature control tank in the back room of the lab. Crabs are fed once a week using Q. tilapia. Capitula were fed a diet of shellfish diet and fresh algae grown in the lab. We created an algae calculator in order to determine our algae growth and what we should feed ourselves. temperature were recorded daily. At the end of the duration of our experiment, we masked and measured all the snails and crabs. We took pictures of the snails and crabs and used Image Pro in order to measure them. We compared our data using an ANOVA test. At the end of our experiment, we found that while there was a difference between the experimental and control crabs, the difference was not significant. However, it is important to note that there was a difference. The ones that were exposed to the crabs were slightly larger in all areas from mass, shell length, shell depth, and shell width. That if we had run the experiment for a longer period of time, we would have been able to see a, a significant difference. 
We would like to thank Dr. Diana Padilla, all the graduate students in the lab, Dr. Grella, and Brentwood High School, as well as Stony Brook University for helping us to conduct our research. Not hipster!